All right, coaches, today we're going to continue our five-minute air raid series with, that's right, mesh. If you're interested in learning how to run mesh in just five minutes, stay tuned to today's video. All right, coaches, welcome back to the 92 Mesh Group channel and Air Raid Nation. This is Coach Coltharp back to you again with another five-minute Air Raid video. Before we jump into the video, man, if you like this kind of content, man, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, click that like button, and hit that bell so you know when we go active. And before we get into that stuff again, I just want to drop a quick shout-out to Coach F over at Linfield High School up in Massachusetts. He shot me a message. Uh, he's been following the channel, looking at the Coach, stuff, Coach Tube stuff over the last year or two, and, and they said all kind of passing records so congratulations to him their quarterback had six touchdowns in his varsity debut and it just is really excited when you guys uh, you know hit me back up and, and coach Knapp and all the guys that's been on the channel and just tell us how you know the effort that we put in to kind of teach you the stuff that we've learned over the years is really making a difference so if you got an example of some of that stuff shoot me a message on Twitter and maybe your school will get identified in the next video all right let's jump into it today we're gonna talk about uh, about mesh and um, you know, anybody who thinks that they can they can learn mesh in um, in five minutes is, is really crazy. So we're gonna we're gonna look at the sh the short version of mesh. Um, this is this is the Washington State version of mesh that uh, that Leak started running, and um, we got some other mesh videos on the channel. You can go check out Drew Piscopo has some good stuff. I uh, I know Coach Mummy has some stuff out there, and Coach Salas has some stuff out there about mesh too. But um, one of the things I find about mesh that that in my opinion, and once again, this is all my opinion, that I think where people make their mistakes is how they read mesh. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm dealing with, with brand new quarterbacks in our spring season. And if you want to check that out and kind of follow our journey, it's been a little bit of a struggle here, there, and everywhere else. But you can follow us over on our Patreon and, and kind of see some videos and things like that of us like really installing our offense. And, you know, we're playing 12 freshmen and sophomores. Uh, you know, on, on offense and defense right now. So we know it's going to be a, a building process, but we trust that process. And we're getting better every day in practice. So we're really excited about that. But one of the things that I find that people make the mistake in mesh, in my opinion, once again, I'm saying this is a mistake in my opinion, is they want to read the mesh first. You know, they hear mesh and then they automatically think mesh, 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 mesh. And in my opinion, I just think that sets you up for failure. So the way I teach mesh is high swing, front side, back side. And, um, you know, we really don't, uh, some people are good enough to read the mesh as one piece. I've always taught it as the front side mesh um, versus the back side mesh, and, and that's really cool. So here, here's the basics of it. Your quarterback is going to read the, uh, the outside defenders on X and Z, and he's going to say, okay, which one do I have the best outside grass? Um, you know, we tell our guys anytime that the, the area between the numbers and the sideline belongs to the quarterback. So which, quarter, which area does he think he can get to? So let's say he chooses the right side out, and that's a 10-yard out. Um, you know, you can run a corner if you want, but I just kind of like the outs because it's an easier throw. Um, in my opinion, or at least, at least to coach up. Um, and so what he then does is he gives the running back a ram call, okay, or some kind of R word call. Now, a lot of guys will say you can throw the X out, but then your back doesn't swing that way. I, I don't want to change the progression for the quarterback at all. So if he chooses the left, the left out, he's going to send the back out to the left. And then he's just going to read high, swing, front side, back side. Okay, so if he chooses the right, he's going to swing the back to the right. He's going to read the out to the swing to the front side mesh. Okay, really, really simple. If he goes to the left, he's going to read the high to the left side swing to the front side back side mesh. Okay, so that that's that's the progression. It's pretty easy. Three step drop or the quarterback. No big deal. Now, here's where the mesh gets difficult. A lot of people, I know I, when I first joined a, a wing T staff, they were having a hard time running mesh. And one of the reasons why, they were meshing at like 10 yards. You know, they saw a playbook. They really didn't understand the intricacies of it. And, and one of the things that I learned from Coach Mummy is he doesn't do anything arbitrarily, okay? Um, everything is kind of tried and true, like for the reason why he runs stick at four yards and all sort of stuff. So, um, you know, he's going to set that mesh at six yards, OK, he's going to set that mesh at six yards. So, you know, I got it. This is the fourth read. So, you know, he's going to sit right in there. And, and what you want to do is you want to run that Y is going to run to the inside of that six yard cone. All right. And you're looking at a left hand mesh with the Y and, and the, the, the mesh is always set from the right side. OK, so Y is coming in. He's going to look for a left hand mesh. Um, 
and H is going to come in, and his job is to find Y. So if Y gets at five, he'll be at four and a half. If Y gets at six and a half, he'll get at six. But you really want it to be around that six-yard mark. And he is running a left-handed mesh, too. So basically what you're teaching him how to do is to slap left hands, okay? Um, now, as Y is coming across his mesh, he is watching the defender that's chasing H. If no defender's chasing H, then he knows right now that it's zone coverage, and as soon as he comes off the mesh, he's going to attack grass, claim grass, and sit in grass. So he's attacking that grass. He sees open grass. He's going to claim it, sit, get big, and wait for the football. Same thing with H. If he's running his mesh and nobody is chasing Y and man coverage, he's attacking that grass. He's going to find that grass, claim it, and then sit in there, okay, and get big. And, and that's the sit process in that mesh. Now, if somebody is chasing H, then Y knows that it's man coverage. And as he comes off that mesh, we want him to climb at a 45 degree angle. Now, some people say you don't have to climb anymore. I know Drew doesn't really want to do that so much. Um, I'm just a little too old school to change that. You know, Coach Mummy has always said climb um, to, to kind of gain some separation from the man coverage. So I'm a 45 degree climb guy. You don't have to necessarily do that. Um, like I said, there's plenty of videos on the internet and even on our channel where guys talking about that differently. But if you read man coverage, climb and keep running. And, and that's just kind of how it is. So that's kind of the basic short mesh version in five minutes. If you want more mesh information or any information that goes in depth in, into uh, any of this air raid stuff, go over to Coach Tube and check out some of our courses. Our foundation courses are over there. One of the one of the most popular courses on Coach Tube these days with air raid, really affordable. Um, we got a lot of videos on the channel and other information. Really appreciate you guys checking us out. And as always, spin it to win.